On behalf of the Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital Art Council, we're thrilled to bring you this digital version of our current art exhibition. We hope you enjoy. The Art Council was created to help enhance the healing environment of the Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital for patients, family members, staff, and volunteers. Through the display of art, we're able to provide an experience for people that helps them take them outside of their current circumstances and alleviate stress. Every year we put together an exhibition of artworks by a variety of artists. This exhibition is our latest one, it's called Close to Home. One of the reasons why we believe in bringing art to a hospital environment, one is to offer a form of distraction for people, a way to pass the time, and a way to think about things outside of their immediate experience, but also to connect with their experiences and what they're feeling. Um, so that's why the themes are important for us to, to make them relevant to what's happening for people here. We hope with this collection that staff will take a moment, patients might take a moment out of their day, uh, just to stop and unwind and think about their own experiences. With close to home, it, it has a lot of different meanings. It can mean when something hits close to home emotionally, um, which is a big part of what happens in a hospital environment. You have those moments that um, are very emotionally charged. Um, and also it's the idea of what it means for something to be a home to you. So a lot of how you make your home, how you make your community, and also in a lot of the artworks we have things that might remind people of home and their experiences. A lot of the artists here bring a lot of different cultural experiences and backgrounds uh, that inform the artwork that they make. Um, some are uh, from Iran, Pakistan, Trinidad, um, there is uh, indigenous artists here as well, uh, all different cultures, Italian, European, Chilean. Uh, we try to have included in the show a lot of different cultural um, experiences and mixes. With every exhibition, I try to include a range of types of artwork. So you'll see photography, video, sculpture, installation drawing, painting, printmaking. We try to offer a little bit of everything. The work here at the hospital is based on my collage work uh, that started with parts and labor, which was hand cut collages that are framed. And that work developed into the mural that's behind me in which I enlarge the collages. The parts and labor uh, suite of collages were taken primarily from cooking and design magazines. I'm interested in how people choose to decorate their homes as well as how they share food, whether that's culturally or just a personal um, interest. I was born in the old Oakville Hospital and my grandmother worked in the cafeteria at the old hospital in its early days in the 1950s. She was a new uh, Italian immigrant to Oakville at the time and the Oakville Hospital was one of her first jobs in which she remained for over 20 years. And then most recently she did pass away in this hospital over a year ago. So I do have connections to being a caregiver as well as a family relation who has used this hospital and spent time time in this hospital and appreciate the artwork that is in this space. When I did the walk around with the curator in selecting the site, we thought that the site of the food court would be most appropriate because of the content within the collages. So as an Italian Canadian, this work does identify with my Italian culture and my upbringing. And there are many images that relate to that, the Italianate decoration, images of Italy, um, the food, and for me that provides comfort in defining who I am and it may provide comfort for other people to access it as well. So this is a piece by Sanaz Mazanani, it's called Shah Jarrah. It's named after a mosque in Shiraz, Iran, and what she's done with this piece is taken some of the imagery of the mosque and then digitized it so that it's repeated um, extensively and mirrored and she's interested in the idea of a pattern that's popular in a certain culture and how that can change over time and evolve, how, what that means for future generations. So she's looking at a really traditional form of patterning but then bringing new technologies to the way that it's presented. 
For the artist, this particular um, location in Iran was where her family is from, and so it speaks about her own cultural experiences and what those mean in the present day. So this is a piece by Jeff Thomas, it's a photograph. Uh, Jeff Thomas uh, calls himself an urban Iroquois artist. This piece is called A View from Burlington. It's one of the many pieces that, uh, photographs that he has taken where he's had these little Indian toys and he's taken them to different places and photographed them in different kind of tourist sites. So it's like being playful with that whole culture of how Indigenous people have been represented and kind of turning the tables and bringing those people on tour to be the tourist instead of being individuals that are people are looking at and, and stereotyping. So this is another series of photographs by Jeff Thomas. In a lot of his work he's looking at the history of what it means to be Indigenous and how Indigenous cultures have been represented here. So he's continuing that investigation in this series of photographs that's called What Happened to the Mississaugas. So he's looking specifically at the history of the Mississauga area and the indigenous presence um, that was here and the traces that are left behind. Um, so he's looking at Mississauga Road exit, the Credit Indian Village, the Plaque Memorial, Ojibwe Chief of the Upper Credit, and also an ongoing series that the artist does where he photographs sort of toy Indian figures in different urban settings. I was born and raised in Santiago, Chile and uh, I left when I was 17. However, over time I have gone back to various Latin American places to visit, to uh, spend time with family, and to do work. Because I felt that my work in some way, my having been born and raised there, have something to do with the quality of the photographs that I was making whenever I went back. So based on a good number of photographs that told me that somehow my photographs of Latin American subjects uh, had a greater intellectual intensity or emotional intensity, I decided to go back with more frequency. And so in uh, the mid-80s I started making a series of trips uh, to all sorts of Latin American locations including in Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, so on and so forth for four months at a time. These photographs come from the impulse to, after many years of uh, distance from my Latin American roots, an impulse to uh, reclaim that identity for myself in an artistic language. So the photographs mm, uh, are a way of returning to a place that I thought I could recognize, but that was different. And so, in a way, is trying to go back to a place that doesn't exist anymore in trying to establish photographs that argue, that point in both directions. They point to a memory on the one side and point to a new reality on the other. But I wanted to make certain kinds of photographs which had social, political, cultural dimensions. And I wanted to, in a way, depict a world that is not driven by stereotypes. I feel home there, I feel home here. And it puts the whole idea of home into question, doesn't it? Because we all think home is one place. Uh, for a lot of people, home is where we were born and raised or where our parents live. And for others, home is a, you know, where, where you hang your hat, so to speak. So there's many definitions. And for me, my definition is I'm a bicultural person. So home is there, home is here. These photographs will, if you allow yourself to be, it will, they will transport you to another reality. They certainly hold a part of myself in them, both as a photographer, as an artist, but also as somebody who grew up in that world. This is a piece by Xiang Gu, uh, as an artist from Vancouver, but he's dealing with subject matter uh, that's quite close to this area. He, uh, it's called Illuminated Niagara Falls, and what he did for this piece is he visited the migrant workers that come from, largely from Jamaica and from Mexico, and they come during certain times of the year to harvest the produce from the Niagara Falls area. Uh, so he's interested in talking about 
the stories of those people that we don't often think about. Uh, we talk about Niagara Falls produce being locally grown and harvested, um, but it's actually through the labor of migrant workers that make it possible. So they come here to raise enough money to bring home to their families. So he's basically um, covered a day in the life. So it starts from early morning down to late at night, uh, and all the activity that happens in a single day for these people. This is uh, work by Denise Tomasis, and Denise uh, attended the Art and History program at Sheridan, um, but she was uh, originally from Trinidad, Trinidadian Canadian artist, and after she completed her studies, she moved to New York, um, where she uh, had a really great career as a painter, doing really large-scale, dynamic paintings. So this is an example of a smaller uh, work on paper that she made actually for an exhibition uh, locally at Oakville Galleries a few years ago. And she was interested in this particular series in looking at um, architectural forms from indigenous communities dealing with her travels in, in China and Africa and India and looking at how they made these sort of pod shaped forms that sort of served a particular need and playing with that kind of those kind of green structures um, that were using sort of very conscious of the kind of materials that they use that were indigenous to their communities. This is a piece by Sumaira Tazin, an artist who uh, lived in Oakville for a number of years and recently moved to Cambridge. Uh, and she was interested, uh, she's a uh, Pakistani-Canadian artist, and she was interested in talking about the experiences of, of immigrants from all different cultures um, who come here or anywhere from abroad and what their sort of hopes and expectations are when you come from one place to another. So the piece is called Sab's Bag, which translates into uh, the phrase, the grass is always greener. Familiar phrase to a lot of people. Um, so she was interested in that whole idea of hoping you're coming to a better place, but what are the realities of that experience? Is it better, is it worse? Um, so you see here a stack of suitcases, um, obviously a familiar item for people who are traveling, and she stacked them up high and inserted a video inside it um, that shows sort of the view from the passing train. So talking about that experience of a passage from one place to another. You come here and there's a bit of the unknown, right? When you're bringing things with you, you don't know. Say you're here to have a baby, right? You come and you pack that bag of everything and you're going to have a completely different experience. When you leave, your life is completely changed, right? So it can mean a lot of different things. She's talking about immigration, but I think it really resonates in the hospital environment as well. I'm originally from Iran. I came to Canada in 1992 and I came to study architecture, but uh, through many different things I ended up studying fine arts. Installation art is a sort of a form of sculpture, but we not necessarily work with materials that are common when you think about sculpture, and we work with a lot of arrangements of objects and things like that, so I do work with a lot of found objects, palettes are one of them. When I think about art and healing, I always think about uh, the meditative aspect that art has for me. When I make something like this, this is hours of just uh, sitting down and drawing this pattern one bit at a time. The process of art making is a big part of that way of uh, being healed. One of the uh, big takeaways from my art for people, I think what I like is that they find it unusual. They find that it's unexpected. Uh, but at the same time, because it's so familiar, they can connect to it. I have stories that are attached to these artworks. I use the specific designs, but at the end of the day, it's the viewer's uh, choice to come and read images and designs and ornamentations. The viewer attaches some sort of a story to the art, and I'm hoping that they take away that story with them. One of the things that I uh, think about when I work with the shipping pallets as an object is the idea of people like myself who are immigrants and we tend to live in an in-between space. We don't belong to the first culture or the second culture, but we're constantly shifting. So these pallets are also that object of in-betweenness, that object of transition, because pallets are in a constant move. They never uh, stop in any 
certain uh, location. As immigrants, we tend to bring an object that represents our culture, whether it's an ornamental plate or an object. And as tourists, we also do that. When we go visit some place, in order to remember that culture, we buy something that has an image of that culture. In the last couple of uh, years, I actually acted as a tourist myself. Whenever, whenever I go somewhere, I buy these touristy knick-knack objects that represent a, a location and I bring them back, but I put an image, laser etch an image on top of them, and that image is very specific coming from a mosque in Iran. So it sort of comes from the origin of where I'm coming from. So, and then I sort of smash the two image on top of each other, questioning what is claimed as culture. I really like the idea of my art uh, being in an outside of the gallery because I think the reach it has, it's much wider. Because I use objects that are from everyday life, I like to see them in a place of everyday life. Having an annual art exhibition in the halls of a hospital is so unique. It adds such a great element of distraction, stress relief. We know that it lowers anxiety, it lowers blood pressure. We have our staff, our physicians, our volunteers uh, be able to have a healthy distraction during a busy day. And also, more importantly, for our patients, our families, our visitors to walk these halls and see art that they may never have a chance to see, it's just such a wonderful thing to be involved with. For me personally, it's been a wonderful experience to be involved with the Art Council. It is so thrilling to walk through the halls of the hospital and see people enjoying art that may have never had another opportunity to do so. And I constantly hear from staff, physicians, volunteers, and patients and families how much they enjoy the art in the hospital. If you would like to get involved, you can visit our website where you will find detailed information about how to loan a work of art, donate a work of art, or make a monetary donation to the Art Council.